pleasant good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I will I return just a housing Secretary of Gopio would like to welcome each and every one of you here at the Ranjit and Baso Hindu Temple to our annual Indian Arrival Day and Honorary Celebrations. As I proceed to begin our program, I would like to welcome our host for this evening's presentation, Ms. Padmini Singh. Jai Sitaram, everyone. We will start by honoring our national anthem. So could we stand? Now have the national anthem of the Republic of India. Please, everyone, take your seats. We would now have our prayer done by Pandit Mukram Sirju. He's a member of Trinidad Academy of Hinduism. He's PRO of the Interreligious Organization of Trinidad and Tobago. He's presently a member of the NACC, the National AIDS Coordinating Council. I present to you Pandit Mukram Sirju. Sitaram, Namaste, Assalamu Alaikum, and a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. First, I will do a universal prayer, and then we'll have the Gopio prayer. Om Sarve Shamangalam Bhuyat Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makase Dukha Bhagbave Nandantu Sarva Bhutani Niratakani Santu Cha Pritiras Tu Parasparam Siddhiras Tu Cha Karmanam Swasti Astoda Gunita Paha Shampra Jabhai Satevas Tu 
स्वस्तिस्तु दिपरिनेत्यम शांतिरस्तु चतुष्पदे शांतिरस्तु नोरवश्या भूर्गवास्वा शिवं तथा सर्वत शांतिरस्तु न सौम्य भवंत भूटानी ओम देव जगत श्रास्ता पाता देव तुमे वहि प्रजा पाल देव शांति कुरु जगतपते यो मे अध्यस्नीहते तिवस्तु सदा भुवि यश्चमाेस्ति लोकेस्मी भद्रा पश्यंत हरि ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम मे ऑल मैन कैन एंजॉय द ब्लेसिंग ऑफ लाइफ मे ऑल लिव विद ऑल सरो मेजरी एंड ट्रवल Do let all be joyful and free from fear. May we all be well wishers of one another and achieve success in our endeavors. May the ruler and his subjects be in peace, men and animal too, O Lord. May peace prevail in the hearts of the divine on earth, planetary and interplanetary space. Let the whole creation be peaceful and blessed. O Creator and Sustainer of this universe, may Thou guard us from temptations and protect us from evil. Grant peace unto us, O Lord. May He who is envious towards us be purified in heart, prosperous and happy, enjoying the blessings of life. And now the Gopio prayer. Dear Lord, we, the executive of Gopio TNT chapter, worship you, knowing that you are omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. Guide us by your wisdom, dear God. Grant us understanding hearts, equal vision, balance mind, faith, devotion, and wisdom. Grant us inner spiritual strength to resist temptations and to control our minds. Free us from egoism, lust, anger, and greed, hatred, and jealousy. Fill our hearts with divine virtues. We offer you, Lord, our thoughts to be fixed on you, our words to have you fixed for their team. our actions to reflect our love for you lord enlighten our understanding help us to forget ourselves and reach out to serve others let our conscience be clear our conduct be without fault our speech blameless our life well ordered put us on guard against our human weaknesses and above all dear god let us learn to trust In your mercy and goodness, O Lord, giver and sustainer of life, Om Shanti Hi, Shanti Hi, Shanti Hari Om. Thank you very much. Our welcome address comes in the form of one Mr. Amrit Rajalal. He is a graduate from the Biomedical Sorry Engineering Program at UTT. He is the first and only certified electrophysiology technician in the English-speaking Caribbean. He is also a very loving, caring, and positive young man, and I say that from knowing him. I welcome you, Mr. Amrit Rajalal. Good evening, everyone. We are so excited to have you all here this evening to participate in our annual Indian Arrival Day program, organized by the Gopi Organization of Trinidad and Tobago, under our very hardworking president, Mr. Karen Nanku. We are all so happy that you could join us today to commemorate commemorate this occasion. And I would like to say a special welcome to Second Secretary of the Indian High Commission of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Ani Rudra Das. Also, a warm welcome to members of Parliament, the Honourable Dr. Tim Gopi Singh, Dr. Suraj Ratan Rambachan, and Dr. Boyendranath Tiwari. Gopi would also like to welcome Pandit Mukram Sirju. We would also like to send our love and condolences to Ms. Oka Sipol on having a recent deceased member of her family. So sit back, relax, and enjoy in the festivities this evening. It is now my pleasure. to welcome again to the stage the madam of ceremonies the very capable fun and loving miss padmini danuk singh our first performer this afternoon is mr devashish ramdot he's a 23 year old student who resides in londonville shagonas academically he is pursuing his bachelor's degree in geo geomathematics engineering at the at ue 
He, in 2015, he entered and placed second in the Mastana Bahara competition, singing a local classical selection, which was originally done by the late great Ustad Hanif Muhammad. So I present to you, Devashish Ramdat. Atma or Paramatma, Fir Brahma, Lo Joe, Jeeva Bina Murda Sakale. अब सारे बिरला होए ये बाके ब्रजनारी अरे बाके ब्रजनारी वो चली जाती बरन हरी जल Baki Brajanari Chali Jati Parana Hari Jal Baki Brajanari Chali Jati Parana Hari Jal Baki Brajanari चरही जवानी जो बन चमके लतक चाल दामिन से दमके चरही जवानी जो बन चमके लतक चाल दामिन से दमकी पहिरी सुंदर सारी प्यार की मुटियन मांग सवारी चली जाती भरन हरी जल बाके ब्रजनारी चली जाती भरन हरी जल बाके ब्रजनारी गोरी अंग नयन मद माती सकियन के संग अतीत राती आए गोरी अंग नयन मद माती अजी गोरी अंग नयन मद माती सकियन के संग अतीत राती तकतिर ची मुश्काये हाय ही मारत नैन कतारी चली जाती भरन हरी जल बाकी प्रजनारी चली जाती भरन हरी जल बाकी प्रज बाके प्रजनारी जल बाके प्रजनारी बाकी प्रजनारी चली जाती बरन जल बाके प्रजनारी चली जवानी जो बन चमके लत कचाल दामिन से दम की पैरी सुंदर सारी प्यार की मुटियन माँ का सवारी बोरी अंग ने नमज माती सकियन के संगती तराती तकरची मुश्काय हाय ये मारत ने नकतारी बार बार छोली बन कोले नरक शाम से हसी मुख बोले सूरदास के जल के लिखा के ऐसे जादू धारी चली जाती भरन जल बाकी प्रजनारी बाके ब्रजनारी बाकी ब्रजनारी बाके ब्रजनारी जल बाके ब्रजनारी चली जाती बरन जल बाके ब्रजनारी चली जाती रे बरन जल बाके ब्रजनारी चली जाती रे बाके प्रजनारी अब 
राम पदार बिंद सिरो अब नय हुआ सुशेन कह नाम गिरी औषधि जाहो पवन सुतलीन सुनो हनुमान हनुमान हो राम भय व्याकुल सुनो हनुमान जय हनुमान जय जय हनुमान श्री हनुमान जय जय हनुमान जय हनुमान जय जय हनुमान श्री हनुमान जय जय हनुमान हो राम भय व्याकुल सुनो हनुमान हो राम भय व्याकुल सुनो हनुमान सुनो हनुमान सुनो हनुमान हो राम भय व्याकुल सुनो हनुमान सीता हरण मरण दशरथ को लागे लक्ष्य मन बान सीता हरण मरण दशरथ को लागे लक्ष्य मन बान इतनी विपत्ति हरि का ऊपर सोचत कृपा निधान हो राम भय व्याकुल सुनो हनुमान हो राम भय व्याकुल सुनो हनुमान सुनो हनुमान सुनो हनुमान हो राम भय व्याकुल सुनो हनुमान लक्ष्मण मरे हम मरी जय बे सिया सुनी त्याग प्राण इतनी यश तुम ले पवन सुत तीन मूर्ति देवदान हो राम भय व्याकुल सुनो हनुमान हो राम भय व्याकुल सुनो हनुमान सुनो हनुमान Thank you very much, Devashish. That was inspiring and lovely. 
On the Aziz drama, we had Akash Daniel, who is the youngest and most skilled drummers of Trinidad and Tobago, I should say. On the Dantal, we had Bobby Miraj, who is very, very, very skilled. The next person of introduction, he is the president of Gopio. He's alderman for, Tr for Shagona's Borough Corporation and a Hindu priest. He sits on several boards. Mr. Nanku is also a trained lawyer. He's a recipient of the Hummingbird Medal Gold 2015. I welcome to the stage now, Mr. Karan Nanku. To the Hindus, I say Jai Sitaram. The Muslims, Assalamu Alaikum, and to one and all, a pleasant good afternoon. Our chief honorary, Dr. Linda Babulal, and her husband, Dr. Michael Babulal. Second secretary to the Indian High Commission of Trinidad and Tobago, or rather to Trinidad and Tobago, and Yurudha Das. Dr. Zisurj Rambachan and Botiwari. Gopio executive members, my dear sisters and brothers, as we gather here this afternoon on this very, very important occasion, and as we celebrate Indian Arrival Day 2019, I want to mention to you that uh, as people of Indian origin, we can celebrate uh, our lives as a tremendous success. Before I continue, I want to invite on stage a few people who have put this program together. Members of the executive of uh, the Global Organization for People of Indian Origin, Trinidad and Tobago chapter. Kindly come to the stage, please. Pandit Ruknath Lakpat. And as he is walking towards the stage, Rajendra Sahadeo Singh. You will stand in a line, please. Krishna Murti Ramjit. Meena Rampasad. I know Richard, you'll take a little while. Richard Rampasad. Nicholas Rajalal. Saraswati Nanku, Pandit Mukram Sirju, Mrs. Avita Rambaran, Mrs. Danraji Singh Bechan. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Of course, we have other members on the executive who are not, not here today. But put your hands together for these hardworking ladies and gentlemen, the executive of Gopio, Trinidad and Tobago Chamber. Thank you very much. You may go back to your respective portfolios. My dear sisters and brothers, the Global Organization of People of Indian Origin, GOPIO, welcomes you to GOPIO International Network of the People of Indian Origin, PIOs. GOPIO was founded at the first global convention of people of Indian origin in New York in 1989. The initial trust of GOPIO was fighting human rights violation for people of Indian origin. Although this has improved maybe in the last 20 years, Human rights violations continue to be a major issue for people of Indian origin throughout the world. Gopio has now set its priorities in pooling our resources, both financial and professional, for the benefit of people of Indian origin in the diaspora. The countries they come from and India, our mother country. Toward this goal, we welcome you to join in this international effort to ensure 
the rights of people of Indian origin wherever we are. My sisters and brothers, I want to remind you, on the 30th of May, 1845, for those of us who were here at that time, I wasn't here. The Fatel Razak landed here in Trinidad and Tobago on a little island called Nelson Island. It's unfortunate that to date, after 174 years, that Nelson Island has, no, has nothing to show that Indians first landed there. I was speaking to doctors Botiwari and Dr. Rambachan, and they assured me, I don't want to be political here, I'm just quoting what doctors Rambachan and Tiwari told me, that when they get back into government, they will ensure that a monument is placed at Nelson Island. Of course, they will have the support of uh, Gopio, Trinidad and Tobago. My dear sisters and brothers, but having arrived in Trinidad and Tobago since 1845, there is still a question whether we have really arrived. And what does that mean? Too many times we go to functions. Too many times we as people of Indian origin, as we exist within others in this country today, we wonder whether we really take our rightful place as the pioneers of the success of Trinidad and Tobago. In truth and in fact, other people can say what they want. I am saying that it is the people of uh, Indian origin, the people who have come from India, our ancestors, and uh, coming down the line, we, are the people of Indian origin, are responsible for the success of Trinidad and Tobago. We are the ones, uh, and we must demand our rightful place as the leaders in this society. My dear sisters and brothers, there are those who might say otherwise, but I want to remind you, if you go to a function like this, you go to a prayer meeting, whatever type of prayer meeting, you go to even a political meeting, you go to a wedding, you go to a satsang, whatever you go, the common denominator is what? The kitchen, food. Who in this country has produced food for the people of Trinidad and Tobago at any time? Who are the persons who are responsible for agriculture in Trinidad? Is it the 1%? Is it other people? No, it is people of Indian origin. And we must take credit for that. Our ancestors did it, and we continue to do it today. My dear sisters and brothers, on various levels of business, we have the Jack Ramuta Sings, Dan Steel. We have the Bhagwan Sings, the hardware chain. We have, we have Sat Naipaul Sat, Sukdev in our audience today. Sat, stand and take a bow. Let the audience understand that if there is one company in this country, a supermarket chain that the 1% have fear for, it is extra food chain of uh, supermarkets. That's the reality of it. We have had, in the sawmill industry, we, in this country, we have never had anybody apart from people of Indian origin who owned a sawmill in Trinidad and Tobago. And today we have concrete houses, but then yesteryear we had dirt houses and board houses. And who was responsible for that? It is our people. My dear sisters and brothers, even in the sporting arena, we have produced, how many of you know of Mansing and Marsing? Many sections of the media, forgive me, Govin and company, will not highlight people of Indian origin who have ex um, excelled in sports. Mansing Amar Singh was one of the top tennis players ever in this country. We have Sabrina Kasi, the top badminton player in the Western Hemisphere for many, many years, who have promoted her. And today, she has a nephew, I think she has a son also, in badminton. And we must understand these things. We also had a badminton player who represents Trinidad and Tobago. A fellow called, um, I forget his first name, but 
um, he's a Mohammed boy from Wright and Boise Trace in, um, in St. Helena. He went to Peru to represent Trinidad and Tobago at the under 19 level to represent Trinidad and Tobago in badminton. And guess what? I and a few people had to beg for funding for him to go to represent Trinidad and Tobago. And the government did not assist him even in our aeroplane ticket. And we own Caribbean Airlines. Why must people of Indian origin be treated like this when other people are treated in different ways? My dear sisters and brothers, if we go to cricket, we here in Trinidad and Tobago have produced three West Indian cricket captains who has come out of Indian origin. Darren Ganga, Derek Murray, and Dinesh Ramdin. And if you talk about any cricket fan, we have IPL today. Who in this world of cricket can comfortably play Sunil Narayan, a household name in the art of cricket? <coughs> Forgive me. <clears throat> My dear sisters and brothers, if we go to various other levels, the irreplaceable Noor Hassan Ali, president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, he is someone we can boast of. Have you ever heard anybody make any negative statement about Noor Hassan Ali? If there was one negative statement about the late president, is that when we go to a function at president's house during his term, we were entertained with orange juice. That is something we should also be proud of. And I'll tell you, the late Kamaluddin Mohammed mentioned to me, he was one of my mentors, of course. And he mentioned to me that he traveled the world. He had lunch and dinner with Maharajas, kings and queens throughout the world. And he, he maintained his religious practices. Thank you. You see how people of Indian origin are. You don't even have to tell them you need water. And, and it comes away. I was mentioning about uh, the late uh, former government minister. Kamaluddin Mohammed, and he mentioned to me that he traveled so much and he never eat any food that was not halal because he was a devout Muslim and he never drank one single drop of alcohol in any country in the world. And these are things that we must be proud of. But when we have fets and so on by several other people, we know what takes place. And we have mentors of Indian descent in this country who we can take pattern from. My dear sisters and brothers, we have had two prime ministers and the two best prime ministers this country ever produced, Mr. Bastel Pande and in recent times, Kamla Pasad Bisesa. We, as people of Indian origin, must be proud about these people. And I want to tell you, please do not misquote me, any members of the media. But there are many people in this country, you know there is a word called jealousy, so long as there are Indians ruling in this country, we talk about corruption. We know nothing yet you know, about, but we, we are viewed as corrupt. There are people who say that Indians like to fight for land. Well, I want to tell you something. That might be so. I work around the court at all times, as the MC would have told you. And I know that in... The majority of time in the civil courts at Trinidad and Tobago, you will see Indian people. Why that is so? Because we have wealth, and sometimes we misunderstand the sharing of our wealth, and we go to court for it. Other people cannot fight for what their ancestors do not have. Take that. My dear sisters and brothers, but there has been discrimination against other, our people for many, many years. And I want to quote a few names. Aisha Babwa acted as, con as controller of customs for four years, and because of racial discrimination, she was never appointed as the controller of customs. Is that fair? You can act in the position for four years, but you cannot be appointed. Kesraj Sigobin acted for five years as the Auditor General of Trinidad and Tobago. And he could not be appointed in the position of Auditor General. Why? 
Wasn't he not qualified? If it is that he wasn't qualified, why did he act in the position? Why? Because he was the most senior and the most qualified. And listen to this one. Haridat Maharaj acted as transport commissioner for six years. And he was never appointed as transport commissioner. But guess what? He did not stay there. You see, as people of Indian origin, we are fighters. I could take some pride. I am a fighter. I fear no one. And I will continue to fight racial discrimination at every level. And guess what? Haridat Maharaj is today a judge in the Equal Opportunities Commission. And if it is that he had to fight his own case, of course, he couldn't do that. But he holds the position that he can do it. And guess what? At the transport division, a fellow called Mr. Gosain is today the first Indian holding the position of transport commissioner. So we have qualified people who can hold this position and who can reign in on expertise. But because of discrimination, we are not given opportunities. And this we must continue to fight. My dear sisters and brothers, I can go on and on and on and on. And I will tell you something. Today we have Indian radio stations. And you know why you hear a lot of Indian songs on radio? Because people of Indian origin who own businesses will advertise on, them sta on those same stations. But if we had allowed the owners of the stations to play Indian music, guess what? You will fail in your expectations. I remember the days when there were only two radio stations in this country. Pandit Mukram, you'll remember that. And guess what? Until Kamaluddin Mohammed came on the scene, we never had an Indian song played on radio. We never would have had it. And then when Kamal came and, and he joined a political party and so on, we were able to get Indian talent on parade. And what was the other one? But whatever. Two hours, two stations, and that was it. And we are the people who build this country. We are the people who provided food for the people. And guess what? There are those who feel, and, and today we are seeing the world is going differently. Because long ago, people of different races who wanted to conquer and rule and divide and rule used to look down at the farmers you still look down at the people who planted the fields. Today, we realize, the world has realized that agriculture is the most important commodity that we need for survival. And where has that come from in this country especially? It is from people of Indian origin. Put your hands together for our ancestors and also for the people who plant the fields today. How often do you go to an agricultural field and see other people other than Indians in the garden. How often do we see that? My dear sisters and brothers, we must stand up for our rights. And I'll tell you something. Not too long ago, I was live on a, on a, a TV program. And I said that I commend Indian people for maintaining our dharma, for maintaining our, our culture, and for maintaining the traditions that our ancestors brought in this country. And I challenge the people of African descent. I say, if you feel discriminated against, come and talk to me. If you feel that you are not earning your rightful place in this country, come and I will help you. And today, I want to reiterate that statement that there shall be no racial discrimination at any level in this country. My dear sisters and brothers, I want to tell you, our forefathers brought with them their culture. And that's the reason we have today so much of Indian songs and music and dances and so on. And for those of us who do not know, I want to tell you, if we were to mention, if we were to ask ourselves, what is a national instrument? Everybody will say the steel pan. That is a recognized national instrument, Dr. Rambachan. The dantal that some young man was playing earlier today, was created in Trinidad. It is a Trinidad and Tobago instrument. We, 
We exported it to India and maybe other countries, but it was created here. If you look at the dantal, it is in two parts. The longer one resembles a crowbar because on the fields, on the plantation, the Indians the, um, who came here and our forefathers, they used the crowbar and the horseshoe and they played music. And that is what the dantal is today. So I am saying that the, at the earliest convenience, my dear sisters and brothers, we must demand that the dantal be part of the national instrument. My dear sisters and brothers, apart from all that I've told you, of course, we have wel welcomed Dr. Ramuta of Nirvana. Dr. Ramuta is here. He is the man who is fighting obesity in this country. And he is doing a tremendous job with regard to health. My dear sisters and brothers, and finally, before I leave um, the podium, I should tell you, and of course, India boasts of Shah Rukh Khan and Amitabh Bachchan, Trinidad and Tobago can boast of Karan Nanku. I thank you. Many thanks for your address, Mr. Nanku. Before we move forward, I would just like to send some thanks to some of our sponsors, Extra Foods, and, <laughs> and Mr. Sat is here from Extra Foods. Welcome, welcome. So I'd like to thank Extra Foods, Shogonas, Anarima, Price Club, Shogonas, Dilip Sings, Electronics, Rupnarines, Das Funeral Home, Charan's Bookstore, Shogonas. Happy anniversary! The Price Club Supermarket turns 25 and we're celebrating! Calling all executive card members for every single purchase of $1,000. You can enter to win shopping vouchers, vacations, appliances, smart TVs, three big prizes of an LG washer dryer combo, a trip for four to Accra Beach Hotel, Barbados, or the grand prize of a new kitchen appliance combo with $3,500 in Price Club shopping vouchers. Runs until August 12th. Visit the Price Club supermarket soon. Our next feature speaker, sorry, he is a Trinidad and Tobago politician, academic and cultural activist who as of 2013 was the Works and Infrastructure Minister of Trinidad and Tobago and Deputy Political Leader of the United National Congress Party, the UNC, and Member of Parliament for Tabakit. He previously served as Mayor of Shagona's Senator and Minister in the Ministry of Industry and Tourism and Ambassador to Brazil. In 1980, he was a founding member of the Organization for National Reconstruction and served as Deputy Political Leader of that party. He played a key role in the establishment of Indian Arrival Day as a national celebration in Trinidad and Tobago and Member of Parliament for the constituency of Tabakit. I welcome Dr. Suraj Ratan Rambachan. Thank you very much. Namaste, Sitaram, Assalamu Alaikum. The, my parliamentary colleague, Dr. Botiwari, and also a very, very efficient minister in the Ministry of Planning when he was there, set the foundation for a lot of what is going on in the country. Mr. and Mrs. Babulal, so great to see you. Very, very good to see you again. Representative of the Indian High Commission, my dear friends, Mr. Nanku, members of the Gopio, ladies and gentlemen. On these occasions, it is very easy to say what we suffer, how we are discriminated, and to let emotions fly. But I think also that it's more important for us to celebrate who we are and to celebrate how we have contributed to the nation's development and to the society's upbringing. To celebrate the moral values that we have been able to extend to the people, to celebrate the fact that we have invested in our children in education, and today they form part of the professional elite, as well as the laboring class and the business community that continues to serve this country. But I think also the time has come for, for us in these celebrations to ask 
a more vital question. What do we want for ourselves as part of the community of Trinidad and Tobago in the future? What kind of space do we want to occupy and what kind of space do we want to share? There is no doubt that we will continue to live in a plural society. That we will continue to live in a complex society. And Trinidad and Tobago is a complex society. And wherever you have a lot of different people with different backgrounds living together, you are going to find moments where people are going to express deep emotions and where they're going to express very troubled minds and hearts. But I think that if we continue to delve on, on the past in that way, we are going to prevent us moving forward. Because very often when you de just deal with the past, where the mind is, there the experience remains. And therefore, in my view, the question this year for me, for Indian Arrival Day, is what is our vision? What is our vision for the future? Where do we want to arrive in the future? What kind of contribution do we wish to make? I want to suggest to particularly the people of the East Indian community that we have to stop being as lethargic as we are about national affairs. We cannot live in a secluded way. We have to rise to the occasion to deal with the complex issues that are now facing our country. I think we have argued enough for the sharing of resources. I think we have argued enough for cultural space and so on. I believe that we have done well after 174 years going to 175 years to ensure that our religious practices, our traditions, our culture, our way of life has survived. It has been a hard struggle, very, very hard struggle. I know this struggle. In 1968, when I attempted to celebrate Diwali at the campus with 42 other students, we were refused the right to celebrate Diwali at the University of the West Indies. And in fact, you know, this story is, is a very good story. We had to hire 14 policemen and an inspector because Joe Ramlochan, who was then the registrar, made a very interesting statement that was the front page of the Trinidad Guardian. It said, unsophisticated elements would come on the campus. Those were the days when a woman in an orgy would not walk through the campus from one side of the highway to get to the eastern main road because she didn't feel comfortable walking through the campus. I remember holding the hand of such a woman one day walking her through the campus. But those days, you had to fight that fight. But I'm not going to be delving into that fight. How have we been strengthened by that? And how are we going to contribute to the national development of Trinidad and Tobago? And that's why I say we have to step out of a kind of lethargy. A lethargy about the social affairs of the country. A lethargy about national issues. A lethargy about our interest in, in laws that are being passed in the parliament. How many of us as East Indian businessmen in this country, have taken the time to read two particular bills that have just been um, debated in the parliament, one still being debated. They explain your wealth bill and this new bill, the whistleblowers um, bill. How many of us understand the implications of that bill? Let, let me give you one example. East Indian people and African people and Chinese people they have developed wealth, but not each one of them used a bank. A lot of them would have built their wealth on the basis of monies that they would have worked for and little by little bought land, built a house, added to the house and what have you. And if today you come and say to that person, explain your wealth, and that does, person doesn't have a history of bank account and receipts and what have you and so on, what is that person going to do? That's, that, 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 that might seem a very um, trite issue to many, but to me, that's, it's an impor important issue because so many of our people have worked very easily. And that's what I'm saying. You cannot sit by and think that um, the parliament is there doing a kind of business and you are not um, affected by that business. And so do the Whistleblowers Act. 
People do not recognize that the Whistleblowers Act is not just about state companies. That the Whistleblowers Act is also about private companies in Trinidad. And you might have an employee working for you today that that employee might simply get um, annoyed and you might fire that employee and that employee might try to go and say you are involved in some kind of thing and they have evidence and so on and so forth. And although the bill makes strong provisions for that kind of behavior, that can happen to you. So this lethargy about national affairs, and I'm just using two recent examples, is very, very important. And it, 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 it must be dealt with. It has to be dealt with. I was very thrilled um, in terms of the extent to which the, the East Indian community in particular um, got involved in the debate on the marriage bill and the extent to which you know, that created a lot of interest in the East Indian community. And I think that is, that is the kind of thing that, that one would expect. So today, for me, is a day to ask a different question, not to delve in the past. I am firmly of the belief that if you stay in the past and if your mind is in the past, you will remain in the past and you're not going to progress. And you've got to move forward. And therefore, now is the time for us to see what it is about our future. We are not going to go back to India to live. We are not going to go back to China. We're not going to go back to Africa. All of that is just emotional, um, emotional, uh, an emotional kind of thing. We are always going to be attached to the motherland. You can't take that away from us. You can't take that away because the culture is in our soul, in our genes, and, and you can't take, take it away. But ask us a different question, Gopio. What is the kind of society that we wish to arrive in the next five years, in the next 10 years, in the next 15 years, and in the next 20 years? I think that is important. And it's beginning to emerge very well. If you take an institution like the Lakshmi Girls High School, Lakshmi Girls High School, one of the youngest of the colleges, girls' colleges in this country, have produced four president's medals in four years. It tells you something. If you take the Chinmaya Mission School and the work of Swami Prakashanand, you will see the extent to which he's transforming the lives of children and providing a very strong and firm Hindu-based education that doesn't make them secluded, but they can carry their values in a universal way in the rest of the society. And when you think of it, Swami Prakashan doesn't get the top 5% of the students in the country. Believe it or not, he gets students who, are, who barely sometimes pass the SEA. And yet, when you look at the results of his school, those very students turn out to get eight ones and 10 ones and 12 ones. What is it that he is doing different in creating that kind of citizen? A citizen who doesn't have to give up their Hinduism, doesn't have to give up their Hindu uh, culture, but a citizen who's been prepared as a Hindu to function in a very plural and complex society. That is my interest in this year's Indian Arrival Day. And I thank you for the opportunity to share these few words with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rambachan. Continuing to thank our sponsors, we'd like to thank Sukai's Diesel Service, also giving thanks to Sorite Appliances Shogunas, Tile Warehouse Limited, right? Continuing, continuing with entertainment, we bring on back now, Mr. Devashisht Ramdat. Aache din paache gaya Hari se kiya nahit Ab pachta ye hota kya kare Chiriya khaya khit Kahe ko soch Kare nar man me कर मलिखा सोई हो वत प्यारी सो दिस सॉन्ग इज डन इन द स्टाइल ऑफ अ लोकल क्लासिकल खिमता एंड दिस सॉन्ग हैज अ अपबीट टेंपो टू इट एंड दिस इज वेयर चटनी ओरिजिनेटेड फ्रॉम काहे 
को सोच करे नर मन में कर मल खा सोई हो वत प्यारे काहे को सोच काहे को सोच काहे को सोच करे नर मन में कर मल खा सोई हो वत प्यारे कर मल खा सोई हो वत प्यारे
होवत प्यारी करमल खा सोई होवत प्यारी करमल खा सोई करमल खा सोई होवत प्यारी करमल खा सोई होवत प्यारी देव राजा दुख कर गए देवरा जादू कर गए जादू कर गए अरे बल मनाए ओ चदरिया रे देवरा जादू कर गए बल मनाए चदरिया रे देवरा जादू कर गए राजा दू करे देवर राजा दू करे गए राजा दू करे देवर राजा दू करे गए बल मनाए बल मनाए चदरिया रे देवर Thank you very, very much, Mr. Ramdat. That was excellent. No words can describe. We wanted this particular individual to receive the effervescence and passion of Indian culture in Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Anirudha Das, Second Secretary in the High Commission of India to the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, joined his office in Port of Spain in May 2017. He is looking after the consular matters, media, and projects work of the High Commission. He also looked after 
the commercial wing for some time. Mr. Das joined Ministry of External Affairs, the Indian Foreign Ministry headquarters in New Delhi in 1997. During his initial years, 1997 to 1999, he worked in China section of the ministry where he handled the desk of Kailash Mansarovar, I hope I got that correct, Yatra, and pilgrimage made by several Indians every year. From 2000 to 2015, he served in different capacities in the Indian missions in Tunis. Mr. Das received his early education in Ramakrishna Mission Residential School in Narendrapur in the outskirts of Kolkata. Mr. Das is a, is a keen reader of books, loves to travel and follows sports, movies and music in his leisure time. He's married to Sumana Das and they have two children, Samidha and Anuvrata, yes? Anuvrata. I welcome to I welcome to the stage our feature speaker, Mr. Anirudha Das. Namaskar, Sitaram, Salam Alaikum. A very good afternoon. Respected members of Parliament, Dr. Suraj Ratan Rambachan, Dr. Bho Tiwari. Mr. Karan Nanku, President of GOPIO, GOPIO, Trinidad and Tobago Chapter, distinguished guests and other executive members of GOPIO, Trinidad Chapter. First of all, uh, when I got to know that I have to come to this function, it was mentioned that uh, I have to bring greetings from the High Commission, so I'm not sure I am still required to give the feature <laughs> address which um, I guess will be given by uh, our Chief Honorary today, uh, Dr. Uh, Linda Babulal. And uh, Mr. Babulal, uh, sorry for missing out your names when I was uh, <laughs> acknowledging the distinguished guests. And I do look forward to hearing from you, from your rich experience when you were part of government. So, first of all, I am very honored and happy to be here representing the Indian High Commission in today's Indian Arrival Day function. Uh, we all know what Indian Arrival Day stands for. I joined our office in May 27 and one of the first programs that I attended from the High Commission was such an Indian Arrival Day function. So the importance of Indian Arrival Day function for people of Indian origin in this country is uh, all very well known to me. And, um, uh, but nevertheless, uh, no matter how many functions I have attended, it is always enriching when I attend such functions because as my previous speakers, Mr. Nanku and Honorable MP, Mr. Rambachan, I still learned a lot about some things that I didn't learn from my earlier visits to such functions. Uh, it was very interesting to listen to the list of names Mr. Nanku uh, spoke about. And um, of course, I don't um, want to repeat uh, the achievements of people of Indian origin in this country from the times of their initial arrival, the hardships they went through, the sacrifices their families made for the space that they conquered for themselves in the narrative of Trinidad and Tobago. So, so we are not only the Indians here, Indians from all over the world are justifiably proud of the achievement of people of Indian origin in Trinidad and Tobago. And what I can say as being part of the government, as part of the Indian Foreign Ministry, that India has never been so proud of its diaspora as it is now. And one thing, and in one way that we have showed for that is last year, I remember we had the first conference of parliamentarians of Indian origin in New Delhi in 2018 January. And our mission was proud to send perhaps the biggest con contingent from all over the world. And that is from Trinidad and Tobago, about 20 parliamentarians visited New Delhi as part of the first conference of parliamentarians of Indian origin. So that shows how much Trinidad and Tobago has made progress in terms of the achievements of the people of Indian origin and how proud India is of its Indian diaspora here in Trinidad. So 
another thing that uh, is very interesting, as I was saying that every time I go to such a function, there are things I learned. As I was talking to uh, Dr. Tiwari about the musical instrument of Dhantal, I said, well, I am aware of the other two in India, but I am not sure where the other thing, I, I was just asking what's its name. And then thankfully, Mr. Kannan could give the complete brief what it was about. And, I'm, and I go back richer with more knowledge about the thing. And um, see, that is one of the things we like about India. Whatever you get, you make the best out of it. And today, you have Dhantal, which is something that Trinidad can export back to India. <laughs> so so this, is, this, is, this is some of the interesting things that, that we are really proud of. And when I go back to my home today, perhaps the first thing that I will discuss with my family is the Dhantal. I will tell them, look, now I know what Dhantal is about. So, so I know its name and know, I can know uh, how it came about. Also, I, when I was uh, sitting there and listening to uh, Dr. Rambachan's uh, 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 speech, uh, I really liked the way that he said that uh, we cannot be delving too much into the past. Uh, knowing that the hardships people have gone through, the sacrifices they have made. Uh, my thing is that knowing that how much Indians have done, done to overcome those hardships, to overcome those, you know, provisions and all the difficulties that were thrown at them to come up to this stage. I only take, I only have hope that things will always get better, even will definitely get better and they can do much more than what they have already done. So that, that makes India very hopeful about its Indian diaspora here in Trinidad. And uh, as he rightly said that uh, we should be looking forward for the next five years, for the next 10 years, where we go from here. Now that you have come so far, I can only see you going much, much forward. So, so, so the, these are things that I feel very hopeful about. I have completed two years in Trinidad. I was discussing with uh, Dr. Babulal that she was asking me how you are finding Trinidad and I said, well, uh, in my previous postings, in my, uh, I spent my first two postings in Africa, uh, different parts of Africa, North Africa and East Africa. In my third posting, I was in Germany, uh, Frankfurt, in the Indian consulate in Germany. But uh, settling down has probably never been easier like here in Trinidad because, well, it started feeling like my own country from the very beginning. So, as I said, I came in May here, and one of the first programs I attended was an Indian Arrival Day program. And when I went there, felt like I have people like my own, enjoying food like we do, and music like we do, well, I cannot be <laughs> in, a, in a very foreign country. So, so, just to say that I have started enjoying Trinidad from the time I started my tenure here in the High Commission, and uh, it has been extremely wonderful so far, so much so that I didn't realize how these two years passed by. <laughs> and I hope the remaining part of the tenure also goes like that. So uh, I again congratulate uh, GOPIO Trinidad chapter for the celebration of Indian arrival day today here. I feel honored to be here and I am happy to be part of your celebrations. And I congratulate you all distinguished, uh, distinguished guests and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Um, we are most glad to hear that you're enjoying Trinidad and Tobago and the culture and the people and the food and generally the environment that we call our own. We, we appreciate it very, very much. Happy anniversary! The Plus Club Supermarket turns 25 and we're celebrating. Calling all executive card members for every single purchase of $1,000. You can enter to win shopping vouchers, vacation, appliances, smart TVs, three big prizes of an LG washer dryer combo, a trip for four to Acra Beach Hotel, Barbados, or the grand prize of a new kitchen appliance combo with $3,500 in Price Club shopping vouchers runs until August 12th. Visit the Price Club supermarket soon. Our next performer is Mr. Dale Ramjatan. Dale has been singing since the age of nine. Later on, he went on to study Hindustani classical music at UTT under the tutelage of Dr. Ruby Malik, Sri Rana Mohip, 
and Sri Prashant Pratesa. He's also the leader of the band Dilse and sings all genres of music, but his specialty and love and passion is for the Hindustani classical and film songs. I introduce to you, without further ado, Mr. Deal Ramjatan. Sitaram, good evening, namaste everyone. I am th I'm thankful for being here this evening, I'm grateful for being here this evening. Um, I only heard about this at a very, very short notice, and I don't think I would have missed it for the world. I normally would look for a song that would reflect the, 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 the 150-something plus years that we've been here, and so forth, and look for all sorts of meanings of the songs and that, that sort of thing. But today, I came across the, a piece of a verse from a song called Home or the Jiniki, which one of the, one of the verses that said, if you would have not supported me, I would have been stuck in the waves without finding the shores. And even at the shore, the waves would have drowned me if you were not there. So I found it a bit um, symbolic or coinciding with the, the whole passage from India to Trinidad and the struggles that we have been through over the years, as was mentioned earlier. And I, I, I do thank you so much for exposing other people because even nowadays we have persons who don't really know what it is because they've, they've, been, they've grown up in something so nice that they wouldn't understand where, and where they would have come from and to know where you're going, you need to know where you would have come from. So I'm just here to do to a few songs this evening and I thank you for the opportunity. जाने क्यों दिल से ये आवाज आई मिलन की है बरते तुम्हारी जुदाई इन नगो में आंसू न कहरा पे मोती अगर तुम ना होते, अगर तुम ना होते, Oh, yeah. 
Lord Jesus, some of these songs that are immortal, for you never get songs like these again. Thank you very much. You so, so much, Mr. Ramjatan. You never cease to amaze me with your fantastic voice. Every time I hear Dale perform, I swear he gets, he just, he's like, he gets better and better every single time. Our next feature address, Dr. Bondranath Tiwari served under Ministry of Industry and Commerce during the NAR government, 1986 to 1991, or part thereof of that period. Minister of Planning under the People's Partnership, the People's Partnership regime, principal of the University of the University of the West Indies, and is currently the Member of Parliament for Kearney Central. I introduce to you Dr. Boindranath Tiwari. Good afternoon, everybody. Sitaram. Asalam. Alaikum, and good evening, as I said. I won't give a feature address. I want to acknowledge the awardee here today who has served us in this country over many years and served at the level of president of the Senate. Her husband, whom I know well in another capacity as a person involved in motor car racing and very much interested in that, and also second secretary of the Indian High Commission to Trinidad and Tobago, and all of you distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Pandeji. Um, I'll just say a few words to you. Um, you would have heard Devasish Ramdat singing, and then you heard the beautiful singing to follow, but you know, when Devashish was singing, I, I couldn't help but think that it was so appropriate to have that kind of music here because in early Trinidad and Tobago, um, out of the Bhojpuri roots here in the countryside, but also because of the urban presence of people who had left indentureship in, people, in places like St. James and Bossier Village and so on. In the early 20th century, places like George Street in Port of Spain, tents were created for the singing of classical, Indian local classical singing music. I don't know how many of you know that, but that is how that music that came out of the villages in the countryside, out of the sugarcane fields, and might have manifested itself in temples, and might have gone to the weddings, and would have gone to the, perhaps after the Ramayan Yags were read, people would sing. That music also found its way in the heart of Port of Spain and places like George Street in things called tents, just like you had uh, Calypso singing in the tents of Trinidad and Tobago. So this is very much a part of the evolving tradition of Indians in the Caribbean and especially here in Trinidad and Tobago. And the Dhantal was part of that because the Dhantal was an instrument to keep rhythm, you see, and it may well have had influence beyond the Indian community in terms of rhythm instruments in Trinidad and Tobago. So 
It's good to remember our past. You know, I was listening to Seward speak and I was thinking, you know, that when my grandmother's, uh, when my grandmother on my mother's side, because, and my grandmother on my father's side, when we were growing up as children, both of them were, were ornies. And I didn't know my grandfather on my mother's side, but I knew my grandfather on my father's side. And he read the Ramayan pretty um, often. And he would always, as children, you know, share with us not just stories of the Ramayan, but stories or philosophical issues that were part of the Vedic tradition. And in this way, as we grew up, we learned about a civilization to which we were connected, although we were Trinidadians and Tobagonians. And more than that, we learned that this tradition, this civilization had values which offered guidelines by which you lived. And we also understood as we grew up that there were standards of conduct that were very, very important. And all the stories we heard were about people who strove for ideal conduct to be the best father or to be the best son or to be the best husband or the best wife. And this notion of ideal conduct that comes out of the civilization and the tradition was a very important part of my growing up. And so the past is important. Every community has noble things that are part of its tradition. And it is important for us to know those and to reflect on those and to the extent that they are applicable today, that we must practice them. But every community has, in a sense, good, bad, indifferent, and we must strive to emulate the things that are worthwhile. Trinidad, is a, Trinidad and Tobago is a land of many communities of which the Indian community now is one. And we are striving as a country to build a nation. We have independence, we've had it for many, many years. And we are a Republican state. So that we have, so we have gone past our connection with the colonial order under which we were subjugated for many, many years. But we are still in the business of, and the challenge, meeting the challenge of building a nation. And the, a nation that prospers and that does well is often a nation that is united in its purpose by values that people share and by common aspirations that people could feel comfortable and included with. And therefore, it requires a unity of purpose, but also a recognizing, recognition of a diversity of origins and openness towards cultural displays and things that are important culturally, and more than that, an openness to engagement of the other and the accommodation of differences. If in a society like ours, we do not recognize the importance of things like that, we are never going to truly prosper. We will make small steps of progress but we will never truly prosper. Because what is going to happen is that we are going to keep floundering and floundering 
And as we make one step forward, we are going to make two steps backward. And the end result is that you often end up staying in the same place or at the very least not making as much progress as you really should have given the talent pool in the country. I think we must be clear about what kind of nation we want in which all can do well. And the nation that we want in which all can do well is a nation in which the principle of fairness applies, in which people can feel comfortable that the society is fair, in which people can feel comfortable that justice will be done, whatever the situation, in which people can feel that everybody has an opportunity, and in which people can feel that merit counts, and that it matters, and that it will make a difference, and that striving to achieve through hard work and commitment and education and dedication and persistence really matters and that the society acknowledges these things as important values. I want to recommend these things because it is important in the context of the progress that we've made to understand that we are far away from where we should be. I don't know if you are happy with the progress of Trinidad and Tobago, but I certainly am not. When I look at other countries that started around the same time that we did and had less resources than we had and had made immense and phenomenal progress, much more than we have, I find it quite disturbing. And there's nothing wrong with the people. There must be something wrong with the way we cohere and the leadership by example that we get. And my own feeling is that we should start to focus on the things that can make a difference to a nation that is diverse but talented and a nation that has, a, of, has achieved much but recognizes that it has hardly achieved as much as it could and makes up its mind that it must achieve what its people deserve to achieve because when within any generation we do not achieve our fullest, what we do is, is cheat our children. If we did everything we could to achieve the most that we can as a country, united in purpose, recognizing the diversity, but understanding that progress matters and enlightenment matters, that it is significant, what we will be doing is leaving a strong legacy for our children which they can inherit and upon which they can build. But when we fall short within our generation, what we do is we leave a burden on the backs and the shoulders of our children. And I say that to you to help you to understand that we in our time must do better that we must stand for something, all those values that we learned as children, all those values of hard work, of ethical conduct, of meritorious recognition, of pursuing lofty goals. We must begin to understand that those things are important to us and they make a difference not just in our lives and our lives of our family, but the lives of our country. And we must recognize that if we do what we can in our time, then what we do is not just lay the foundation for the generation which comes, but uh, nor do we just give them a standard to emulate.
but we give them a higher ground from which to climb higher. I leave these things with you because in my view, our country is in deep need of inspiration at this point. And our country needs something lofty, lofty to aim for, to work towards, and to unite its people behind. And I believe that if there ever was a time that the country needed to be united and committed to building a noble future, it is now. So, I thank you very, very much for the opportunity to say a few words to you. I certainly enjoyed the cultural program and the uh, music here. Um, I also enjoyed the discourses that I heard that were given here today. But I urge us all to work for the future. What's past is past, it has been done. Whatever is present, we are also present within the present to create the future. And the future is something that we first design in our heads in order to make it reality by the work that we do. So let us remember that. And a future for the country can only be a good future for the country if we build it together. We share strong values and we have a common sense of purpose that what we are trying to achieve is desirable for all of us because this desirable state will give us all a secure place. You know, C.L.R. James was a great thinker he was a world thinker, but he was born in Trinidad and Tobago, right here in Tunapuna. He went to Queen's Royal College. He went, never went to a university. But he was an extremely sophisticatedly educated man. And he, when he read A House for Mr. Biswas, which is one of the great novels of the 20th century in the world, and which was written by one of our sons in this, on the, of the soil, V.S. Naipaul, he said, when he read House of Mr. Biswas, he felt that it was a story about a search, a metaphorical search of the Indian community for a room in the national building. This was a long time ago in the 1961 that novel was published. We were just getting independence in 62. Since then, a lot has happened and a lot have passed. And I think what we need to do now is to expand and build that national building to embrace all and to build it one by one, each of us, brick by brick. Thank you very much. The Pulse Club Supermarket turns 25, and we're celebrating. Calling all executive card members. For every single purchase of $1,000, you can enter to win. Shopping vouchers, vacations, appliances, smart TVs, three big prizes of an LG washer-dryer combo, a trip for four to Accra Beach Hotel, Barbados, or the grand prize of a new kitchen appliance combo with $3,500 in Price Club shopping vouchers. Runs until August 12th. Visit the Price Club Supermarket soon. Good afternoon, everyone. At this point we, of the program, we come to the highlight, which are our awardees and our honorees. Our honorees this year are Dr. Linda Babulal, Ms. Okasi Paul, and Mr. Harry Nine Pasad. One of our honorees this year had an untimely death in her family, and she had to fly out to attend this funeral. We, are, on behalf of Gopio, would like to extend our condolences to, the, to Ms. Ogasipol and her family at this time. Our next awardee, our honoree, is Dr. Linda Babulal. And I would like to invite one of our executive members to give a brief bio on Dr. Babulal. I welcome Ms. Mina Rampasad.
Sit around everyone, and a pleasant good evening to all. Uh, before I present this award to Mrs. Bab Dr. Babulal, please allow me to uh, enlighten you with some of her achievements. Mrs. Babulal was born on 31st of January 1941, uh, attended St. George's College, attaining a grade one certificate, then went on to Manitoba University. Uh, she studied uh, medicine at the Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin, Ireland, um, in turn and did house o officership at Port of Spain General Hospital, was offered a scholarship to specialize, but having five children, and it made it difficult to go back abroad. So went on to, uh, to her own general practice. Um, she attained diploma in addictionology and acupuncture did years of voluntary work at Drug Rehabilitation Center at Mount St. Benedict, and lectured on addiction and alcoholism at schools, churches, etc. Uh, she decided to embrace her second childhood dream and went into politics. And guess what? She won her seat. <laughs> uh, she became the Minister of Government, Social Development, and Ministry, in Ministry of Health as well. Uh, she was the first woman to hold the following positions. President of the Senate, acting president of Trinidad and Tobago for six years, became chairman of the PNM. Uh, she's married to Dr. Michael Babulal, who is here. Uh, Dr. Michael Babulal, I'm sorry. Uh, mother of five children and 11 grandchildren. I present to you, please, um, let's give a round of applause and welcome Dr. Linda Babulal. This way, please. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Das. Madam Chairman, Executive Members of GOPIO, Honorable Members of Parliament, Representative of the Indian High Commission in Trinidad, ladies and gentlemen, Namaste Sitaram, Assalamu Alaikum. I am humbled to be among those being honored today at your organization by your organization as we celebrate Indian Arrival Day. And I thank you for the opportunity to say a few words. <clears throat> you heard from my brief bio, but I feel that I should add a little bit about my family. My father's parents met on the boat on their way over here, and they were sent to Plum Mitan on their arrival. My mother's grandparents came directly from India, served their indentureship, and became shopkeepers in the Tortuga, Grand Coover area. My father was a brilliant man who in today's world would definitely be a university graduate. He was well-read, eloquent speaker and debater, he spoke and read Hindi. He had read the Vedas, the Gita, and the Mahabharata. And he passed them on to me to read when I was in high school. Of course, I had to read them and discuss it with him afterwards. He also introduced me to Tagore, Vivekananda, and so on. And he would take me to the Himalaya Club whenever there were lectures, especially by visiting people from India, professors or whoever were visiting. Just as he took me also to hear Dr. Williams and Dr. Kapil Deo. So he would introduce me as a young person to all this variety. However, he was hardworking as an insurance manager and an agent trainer, and he had very little time with six children to provide for. And he always regretted not teaching us 
Hindi. My mother, also very bright, was a perfect lady who was also accomplished. She too spoke the local Hindi and Patwa, but we didn't learn it, sorry to say. As you know, I was president of the Senate for nearly six years. While there, I was approached by the then High Commissioner of India to attend the first Pravasi Bharata, Bharatiya Conference in Delhi, India, and to present a paper at the opening ceremony. I was the only woman speaker out of seven speakers, Thank you. which included Dr. Sylvia Naipaul, who was the chief guest. So we had two Trinidadians on that platform. I chose to speak about the role that women played in the diaspora and the contributions which they made. Professor Brinsley Samaru helped me with the research. I talked about the hardships which they faced, the sacrifices they made, the hard labor they did, the abuse and the ill health they suffered. But then I emphasized that they had backbones of steel, which enabled them to care for their large families, instilling family values, insisting on education as a means to elevate themselves and their children. They preserved their religions and their spiritual values by reading their holy books and praying. I spoke about their role in maintaining their culture, songs, bhajans, instruments, dance. They lived in deplorable conditions, but they helped to raise their children, my father and mother and yours, out of these conditions through education and by instilling values of hard work, saving, and sacrifice. My paper was so well received that afterwards I was asked to do an impromptu address to a group of parliamentarians who were interested in learning more about how we had transitioned to the present day <clears throat> and how we were different to them. They were interested in knowing that. I spoke about our food, curry, dal, doubles, roti, similar but distinctly our own. I told them about our music. We had classical and religious music and songs, but we had developed chutney, our own tassa, along with national steel band, which played Indian music beautifully. I told them that we had excelled in all fields of work and in all areas of life. We are foremost in the professions of law, medicine, teaching, engineering, farming, business. They were profoundly touched and greatly interested in learning more. So I invited them to visit Trinidad and Tobago, but I really don't know how many of them did. So ladies and gentlemen, as we celebrate Indian Arrival Day once more, let us, yes, remember our ancestors. But as Saroj said, let us accept our own diversity and progress and our modernization as a group of people evolving in a Western democracy. India is such a large, diverse country. If we drop Trinidad in India, we'll be just a little village, not even a town. It is difficult to encompass how different India is from north to south and east to west. And our ancestors came from all over and have melded into what we are today. I am proud to be of Indian ancestry. And, will, and always I feel a tug to go back to India. My husband will tell you that. 
In 2010, Mr. Manin asked me if I would consider going as ambassador to India. And I eagerly accepted with my husband in the background saying, yes, yes, yes. Because he, he was very eager about that. And in fact, I was approved and accepted by the Indian government. But there was a change of government, as we know, and unfortunately, I was unable to take up that position, which I deeply regret. But I am also a proud Trinidadian who loved my country, and I have proved this by serving my people as a doctor, my childhood dream, and then I served the larger constituency as a parliamentarian, my second childhood dream. I have had the distinct honor of being the first woman president of Trinidad and first woman president of the Senate of Trinidad and Tobago, first woman to act as president of Trinidad and Tobago. And let me tell you, that was indeed an honor. And the first woman to hold the position of chairman of a large political party. So as a woman of Indian heritage, I am proud of my achievements and my contributions to the country of my birth. And I will always continue to serve and to uplift my country and to work for the upliftment especially of women of my country. I thank you for this opportunity to speak to you and for the honor bestowed on me today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Linda Babulal, for your inspiring words. I would like to introduce to you all Mr. Nigel Suchet, who is a member of this temple, the Ramjat and Basu Prasad Temple. He's the manager of Finance and Community Improvement Services Limited, devotee and Hindu worker. I introduce to you Mr. Nigel Suchet. All protocols observed. Mr. Karan Nanku, President of the Global Organization for People of Indian Origin, Gopio. Members of Parliament, our Chief Honorary, Dr. Linda Babulal and her husband, Dr. Michael Babulal. Representative of the Indian High Commission, Mr. Harinayan Prasad and family. Specially invited guests, members of the community, brothers and sisters. May I say a very special namaste, assalamu alaikum, and good day to you all. I am Nigel Suchit, and I am indeed honored to welcome you all to the Ramjit and Basu Prasad Hindu Temple today, as we join with Gopio in their Indian Arrival Day celebrations 2019. May I also say a very special welcome to viewers of Sankhya Television, who are here with us again today. Today is indeed an auspicious day to host such a function, which recognizes the contribution of the members of the Indian diaspora as we celebrate with our brothers and sisters of the Muslim community as they begin the holy month of Ramadan, one of the most auspicious periods in the Muslim calendar. Today, my task is twofold. Having firstly extended a warm welcome to all on behalf of the members of the Ramjit and Basu Prasad Hindu Temple, and by extension, the Hari Prasad family. I will now like to share a little insight into the pillar upon which this temple, this family, this company, and this community is built upon, Mr. Harinarayan Prasad, more popularly known as Mr. Hari Prasad. Starting from very humble beginnings, Hariji was born in Todd's Road, the eighth of 14 children to parents Ramjit and Basu Prasad, whom this temple is dedicated to and appropriately named after. At the tender age of 10, he went to live in Dow Village, California, with his aunt who was unmarried and had no children. Here, he learned the value of hard work discipline, and commerce as he tended to animals, ran a minimat, and went to school in San Fernando. 
lessons which invariably contributed to the successful businessman that he is today. As life moved along, young Harry fell head over heels for the beautiful and charming Prabha, who blessed him with marriage and four loving children, Vivekananda, Varun, Valini, and Pandit Veda Pasad. Today, his family has expanded to include Valini's dedicated husband, Abhishek, and the apple of the family's eye, young Bradley David Ramsahai. He first made his mark in the world of work at Nestle, where he grew from strength to strength, climbing the ladder, earning not only accolades for his skills, but for his ability to meet and exceed all expectations. Earning the respect of international directors as well as his peers and subordinates. Eventually, he left Nestle to help in a family company known to many today as Kusals, where he took the reins in terms of operations and development. Having completed many projects of national importance, he can still give details of many of the major roads that they built along the way. As fate would have it, he started his own company with only one truck, one old truck, and one backhoe. And with hard work, determination, and an indomitable will to succeed, he was able to build it into the company that we know today, Harry Passard and Sons Limited. But today is not to celebrate his academic or work achievements. Today we recognize the work that he has done in giving back to the people and the nation of Trinidad and Tobago. A very strong devotee, Mr. Passard has spent his life giving back to the community, having contributed to the construction, renovation, and development of several religious institutions, including the temple in the famous Dow village Ramlila grounds, where he himself partaked in the Ramlila celebrations. He has also contributed to numerous community projects and events and continues to do so at this present time. His dream in support of Dharma was to erect flying Hanuman Murtis throughout Trinidad, with four already having been erected thus far, in Todd's Road, Barakpur, at the Tunapuna Hindu School, and right outside of the beautiful temple here in Mohipa Trees. In support of his community and his son, Pandit Veda Pasad, this beautiful ashram was constructed and acts as a hub of activity, hosting religious events, yoga classes, Hindi classes, and a myriad of other events. Today, as we recognize the efforts of this son of the soil, we recognize that our health is our greatest wealth. Unfortunately, Mr. Hari Prasad is not very well and is unable to join with us today. But he wishes, through me, to extend a warm welcome and best wishes to all. The Bhagavad Gita speaks about selfless service. If I am to paraphrase, it urges one to do selfless work, never seeking the fruits thereof. Mr. Passard has done what he could because of his love for his own people and for our country. He has never expected recognition for his efforts, but he is humbled by this award and hopes that others will step up to the plate to help develop one community at a time. In so doing, we will all develop our villages, our country, our region, and by extension, our world. Let us all do what we can. Namaste, sitaram, assalamu alaikum, good day. We would like to welcome Mr. Vivek Pasad, the, the first son of Mr. Harinan Pasad, to accept the award on behalf. We would like to also welcome the, secretary, the second secretary of the High Commission and our president to present this award to Mr. Pasad. I now pass you back to our MC for this afternoon's proceedings. 
Thank you, Virginia. Moving on with our entertainment for this afternoon, we now have Mr. Naresh Timal, also known as the Biraha Raja, and he's accompanied by the Shooting Stars Tassa Group. So, for your viewing enjoyment, please put your hands together for Mr. Naresh Timal. Sitaram, everybody. And let me take this opportunity to wish you happy Indian arrival. You know, I am known as the Biraha Raja, and today I'm going to perform Biraha singing for you. But I will tell you that Biraha singing was brought by our ancestors when they left India and they came to Trinidad. You see, when they journeyed from India, they didn't know where they was going. But what they hold on to, they hold on to the rich culture and traditions. And that is what we should do, that wherever we go, we must never be ashamed of our culture and our dharma. We must hold on to it. Biraha singing is a form of extempo. And today I'm going to perform for you a very beautiful biraha that would explain the greatness of Devi Mata. I do hope you enjoy. The Biraha go start from here. He diawa mita kurke sumiro Are gawa ke miriya makana Are angura angura mehi paucha me sumiro Mere dharti ke miriya bhakana You see, this Biraha is one of the ancient art form of folk theater. Singing and dancing accompaniment to the drums of the Tasa. Local culture, local content, a hundred percent. Hare jago more janna nike jat more jola, Devi mata jage lama gini yake dola. Hey Devi Mata Jage La Magini Yake Dola Devi Mata Jage La Magini Yake Dola Hey Devi Mata Jage La Magini Yake Dola Ke Nipi Yage Dade La Le Changal Kukara Hey Are ni biya ke jare lale jangal ko kar raha hai jo le paro se mai bira ha pukara beta. Are ni biya ke jare lale jangal ko kar raha hai jo le paro se mai bira ha pukara. Hey, Dimbi, ya ke dare lale jungle ko dara hai ke jol paro se mai beda hapukara. Hey, jol paro se mai beda hapukara. Dimbi, ya ke dare la pada hai ke tara. You know, Trinidad is known as Hanuman country. We are very blessed that our ancestors has passed on these rich traditions to us. And this piece of Biraha I do, dedicated to Pawan Putra Hanuman. Hare Pawanata Nai Sankate Harina Abha Mangala Murati Roop Ramlakana Sita Sahita Arahe dai basa husura bu. Arre Lanka puri meta ye Hanumana, Lanka puri meta ye Hanumana. Lanka puri. Hare Lanka Puri Mita Aye Hanumana Lanka Puri Mita Aye Hanumana Hare Lanka Puri Mita Aye Hanumana 
अरे गली गली देखो लंका में दो रो बेद कहू नहीं पाई रे बाई बोलो आपन मन में माता उपाई गैल भीषण सुनो रे बताई अरे लंकापुरी मिता ये हनुमाना लंकापुरी मिता ये हनुमाना अरे अरे कहत पबीषण सुनो रे पवन सुत कहत पबीषण सुनो रे पवन सुत अरे कहत पबीषण सुनो रे पवन सुत ए कहा बंदर कहा से आई अरे लंकापुरी मिता ये हनुमाना लंकापुरी मिता ये हनुमाना बोलो लंगापुरी मिता ये हनुमाना लंगापुरी मिता ये हनुमाना बेटा अरे कहत पवन सुत सुनो रे बबीषण कहत पवन सुत सुनो रे बबीषण अरे कहत पवन सुत सुनो रे बबीषण ये कहा राम से आ से आई बोलो लंगापुरी मिता ये हनुमाना लंगापुरी मिता ये हनुमान बेटा Thank you very much, Mr. Timal, for your very colorful and definitely kaleidoscope portrayal of Biraha in Trinidad. Of course, the boys of Shooting Star Stars Group, Akash Daniel, Fayad Mohammed, Kailash Daniel, and Owen Williams, thank you very much, members of the Shooting Stars. To give our vote of thanks this afternoon, I introduce to everyone Mr. Rajendra Sahadeo Singh, who is the Secretary of Gopio. A pleasant good evening again, everyone. Namaste and good evening, invited guests, awardees, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. I am Rajendra Sahadeo Singh, Secretary with Gopio, and I was given the privilege of saying thanks to everyone who made this year's celebration a success. Firstly, I would like to thank Mr. Anirudha Das, Second Secretary of the High Commission of India. I thank you for accepting our invitation. Your presence and words was greatly appreciated. To the Honorable Dr. Suraj Ratan Rambachan, your speech, as always, filled with knowledge and information, which we all appreciated. To the Honorable Dr. Bohindranath Tiwari MP, your words, again, filled the auditorium with knowledge. To all the recipients of the award tonight, Ms. Uka Sipol, Dr. Linda Babulal, Mr. Harinarayan Prasad, we thank you for accepting our invitation and graciously accepting our recognition. A special thank you to the members of the Passat family for allowing us to use a venue with their gracious hospitality. To our photographer, I thank you. 
to all the artists, the performing artists, Mr. Narish Timal, Mr. Devashish Ramdat, Mr. Dale Ramjatan, and the Chatak Shooting Star Thassa Group. We thank you for giving us such entertainment during our program. Of course, to Gopio executive members and all our members. Without our financial support of our um, support, we could not have made this possible. I would like to thank Extra Food Shagwanas and Arima, Price Club Supermarket Shagwanas, Dilip Sings Electronic, Rupnarain Buyers Mart, Das Funeral Home, Charan's Bookstore of Shagwanas, Sokai's Diesel Service, Medical Center, Mid Center Mall Shagwanas, Surite Appliances Shagwanas, Tile Warehouse Limited, Nirvana Waste Loss Clinic. And by no means least, I would like to thank God. In whichever way you see this being in your eyes, we thank him, and I would like to thank everyone for being here and make sure you all reach home safely. I would like to welcome back our MC for this evening where we close, and we would like to thank everyone again for coming. Um, Mr. Nanku, our president, would like everyone on stage, all volunteers, all executive members, all members, everyone associated with Gopio, please come on stage. All artists, all volunteers, चल पड़े भैया इधर ले चला भाग हमारा उधर चल पड़े भैया बड़ी भवन में नाम हमारी केवल राम की भैया भैया केवल राम की भैया ओ आज बिछुड़ कर जन्म भूमि से आज बिछुड़ कर जन्म भूमि से दूर देश को जाए ओ भैया सबसे पहले सबसे बढ़कर हम है जहाजी ओ भैया हम है जहाजी भाई रामा हम है जहाजी कोई मजहब जाति हो कोई हो या फरिश्ता कोई मजहब जाति हो कोई हिंसा हो या फरिश्ता सबसे बड़ा सदा होता है सिर्फ प्यार का रिश्ता भैया सिर्फ प्यार का the Price Club Supermarket turns 25 and we're celebrating. Calling all executive card members for every single purchase of $1,000. You can enter to win shopping vouchers, vacations, appliances, smart TVs, three big prizes of an LG washer dryer combo, a trip for four to Accra Beach Hotel, Barbados, or the grand prize of a new kitchen appliance combo with $3,500 in Price Club shopping vouchers. Runs until August 12th. Visit the Price Club Supermarket soon.